The Cup Series has a Texas Motor Speedway to begin the round of eight, and we see a lot of chaos, a lot of big ruts, and we see a familiar face lock his way up to run for a championship in the NASCAR Cup Series. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. I just got done watching the, the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500 from Texas Motor Speedway. We've got a lot to talk about from this race. This race is actually a little better than I thought it was going to be. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into today's race here at Texas Motor Speedway. And of course, this is the first race with that new resin comp. And before the weekend began, NASCAR decided to bring that comp up that they could use in Nashville and Michigan. They decided to use that compound in today's race for the Xfinity Series race. It actually made the race a little better for the Xfinity Series race. Now let's go ahead and jump into it. So for the green flag drop, you had a bunch of guys go to the rear of the field, including Chase Elliott, who failed inspection multiple times. Others that went to the back were Corey LaJoy, Chase Briscoe, Garrett Smithley, Alex Bowman, Cody Ware, Davis R., and Justin Haley would all have to go to the rear of the field. Many of those guys basically failed an inspection. Others, like Alex Bowman, basically having unapproved adjustments. So, on the start of the race, you have Kyle Larson on the inside and Denny Hamill on the outside. Kyle Larson got a really, really good push, I believe, from William Byron. Or I can't remember who he got a really good push from, but he got a really good push. He was able to take the race lead in pretty dominating fashion. And then he would basically come into the competition, yell, he pretty much dominate, pull out about a second or two second lead, coming up to the competition caution, and the competition caution would come out in this race. Then we would see a lot of cars come down, but while others decide to stay out, for strategy reasons, guys like William Byron, Mark, Trick, Sheener, Tyler Reddy, they all came down and took two tires, while guys like Kyle Larson decided to take four tires. And the next, the first playoff driver to have problems for the day, Kyle Busch would unfortunately would get penalized for speeding on pit road and would have to come back down to pit road and would have to come down to the rear of the field of the race. And then on the restart, you have William Byron on the inside who took two tires on the restart and Mark, Trick, Sheener on the outside. William Byron was able to get the race lead. And then the big one would strike on lap 31. Bubba Wallace would get loose going into turn number two. He was trying to make it three wide, trying to get clean air. And Bubba Wallace would get loose into the corner. He would spin out and collect a ton of cars. Kyle Busch actually got a little bit of damage in this wreck, but there were a lot of drivers involved in this wreck, including Ryan Newman, Eric Amarola, Bubba was involved, Michael McDowell, Ryan Priest, Anthony Alfredo, Cole Custer, Ross Jessain, Ricky Sandow Jr., Alex Bowen, Cody Ware, Josh Balicki, Joey Gase, Justin Haley were all involved in the wreck. They said that that was the biggest wreck in the playoff race at Texas they have ever seen. Tons of cars have fallen this race. I think 10 out of the 15 cars who were involved in this crash fell out of this race early in the get-go. And then Kyle Busch, who got a little bit of damage, decided to come down the road for insurance and precaution to his tires would not come down. And then actually during the on top and off on field, you would see Brad Sosky and Ryan Blaney come down the road to top on field to make sure they had enough gas to make it to the end of the stage. So on the restart, you have William Byron inside and Mark Trick Jr. on the outside. And Mark Trick Jr. got the lead for a lap. And then William Byron was able to get the race lead and stay out and kept going. Meanwhile, what you had going on at the time, you had the guys that pitted and topped off under the, that last caution, talking about guys like Ryan Blaney, Brad Gislowski. They were trying to make sure that they can make it to the end of this stage, while a lot of the guys knew that they were going to have to come down pit road at that time. So you had Ryan Blaney and Brad Gislowski, who were basically saving fuel at that point. William Byron would dominate for a little bit, and Kyle Larson, who was over three or four seconds back of William Byron, he was able to catch William Byron. He was able to take the race lead and put him down, basically take the race lead, and took off. And then with 10 laps, to about 10 laps to go in the stage, Kyle Larson would come down pit road to basically top off on field to make sure he had enough gas. And then the rest of the guys, as they decided to came, come down pit road, guys like William Byron and Denny Hamlin, who were currently at the playoffs at that moment. And then Kyle Busch, who pitted under that last caution, he decided to come down pit road in a precaution situation, and he was able to go say to, decide to stay out, and he was able actually to hang on and win stage one here at Texas. Motor Speedway and get 10 bonus points. Ryan Blaney also is able to make it on gas. Also was Brad Kislowski. Kyle Larson, who had basically the lead at the time, he actually got all the way back up to third and got eight beneficial and crucial points. And then we would come down, leaders would come down per road with Kyle Busch taking four tires on that stop. And then a few guys took the wave round under that caution. Guys like Chris Bell, Eric Jones, and Matthew Benedetto, they all basically took the wave round on that. So on the restart, you have Kyle Busch on the inside and Kyle Larson on the outside. Kyle Busch able to leave for a few laps and then Kyle Larson's able to get by Kyle Busch and pretty much take the race lead in dominating fashion and started pulling away. And then a little bit into the run, 
Chase Elliott would come down the road for a vibration on the car. Apparently, he had a tire going down at that point, and he came down the road, and he pitted from seventh. He was having a pretty good day overall as a whole. He would have to come down the road for a tire vibration, but he would get kind of a little bit lucky because there actually would be a caution for debris. A debris yellow came out probably from one of the damaged cars, and that would bring out the caution on lap 165 of the race. And then all the leaders would come down pit road, and they would all take four tires, and Kyle Larson won the race off pit road. Kyle Larson led on the restart, and he was able to get away, and then William Byron got around Kyle Busch, and William Byron tried so hard and so desperately to get around Kyle Larson, but Kyle Larson's car was so good on the long run that he was able to pull away from William Byron, and he was able to get pull away out to about a second or a second and a half lead, and he was able to win stage two here at Texas Motor Speedway. Then we would see all the leaders come down the road, and they took all four tires, and Kyle Larson would restart with the race lead. And Kyle Larson had the lead, and he was able to take off on the restart. And then, with 50, Kyle Larson looked like he was going to run away with this thing, started pulling away, had about a two or three second lead, had a dominant car up this point. And then we would see the next caution race come out with about 50 or 60 laps to go in this race. Chase Briscoe is having a very strong day. He had a top 10 car most of the afternoon. He would basically have smoke in the car, would have issues. I think an engine problem. He had a tire basically broke, unfortunately. And he would basically bring out the caution with around 60 laps to go in this race. And then the leaders would come down the road, hopefully for the final time in the race, and Kyle Larson won the race off pit road. So, on the race start, you have Kyle Larson leading and William Byron on the outside, and Kyle Larson able to get the race lead from William Byron. And then Brad Sossi would try to get around Tyler Reddick, but he was not able as Tyler Reddick was able to get it. And then Kyle Larson looked like was going to run away with this thing and for sure have the win. And then with 34 laps to go, another playoff contender would run into problems. Joe Lugano, who was running 12th, really wasn't having the best of days, to be honest with you. He was running outside the top 10 most of the day. Joey Logano basically blew an engine with 35 laps to go. This is his first engine failure since June of 2014. So it's been a long time since he's had an engine let go. And unfortunately, blow an engine with 35 laps to go. And unfortunately, will now have to go into the next two weeks. He is pretty much in a must-win situation since he's now 23 points below. He's pretty much in a must-win situation going into the next two weeks. And then... We would see the top six stay out at that point. And then Chase Lee was the first to come down pit road. And then everyone that came down pit road decided to take four tires. So on the restart, you have Kyle Larson on the inside and William Byron on the outside. And then Kyle Busch got into the back of Chris Buescher, who got sideways, tried to basically pull off a really, really stupid block. And then Anthony Alfredo, who tried to get around him, hit, spun, and it hit the outside wall really, really hard and would bring out the caution with the big wreck. He would get a ton of damage, and the car would unfortunately catch on fire. Now, luckily, Anthony the Alfredo was able to walk away from that wreck. And then because this NASCAR decided to red flag the race for a little bit, about 11 minutes to get all the damage fixed on the track and stuff. And then we refired the engines with 27 laps to go. On the restart, you would have Kyle Larson on the inside and William Byron on the outside. And Kyle Larson is able to get the race lead. And then a few laps later on that particular restart, Denny Hamlin and Ryan Blaney would have some contact. And Denny Hamlin would basically get a tire rub. And people are kind of worried if Denny Hamlin was going to make it or not. Well, three laps later, with 21 laps to go, Denny Hamlin would spin from seventh after losing a tire. Now, luckily for Denny Hamlin, at this particular point, Denny Hamlin was able to avoid having much more serious issues at that point and he was able to survive potentially having more problems so Denny Hamlin did not get any damage from that wreck thank God for that because it could have been very very disastrous if Denny Hamlin had more problems and he came down the road at that time to fix the damage and all that stuff so on the restart of Kyle Larson on the inside and Ty Reddick on the outside and Kyle Larson is able to clear for the race lead and pull away and then with, with 13 laps to go in this race, the final major wreck of the race ended up happening with Martin Truex Jr. and Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez and Martin Truex Jr. make a contact. In my opinion, it was on Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. tried to pull a really, really big block. He would get into the outside wall hard, and he's pretty much below the cutoff line currently at the moment. And then we are basically at that particular point. Keep going, and then we can bring the caution out with 13 laps to go. And then on the restart, you have Kyle Larson on the inside and William Byron on the outside. And then basically Kevin Harvick got into the back of Tyler Reddick. That was really, really cautious. I don't understand what Kevin Harvick's doing there. He got into the back and was very, very lucky. And then William Byron, Tyler Reddick, a lap later, they would have contact, and William Byron would have a tire rub. And then the final, actually, the final caution of this race would come out with six laps to go. For Chase Briscoe, who got loose in the outside wall, and unfortunately,
eventually Chris Buescher had to check up, and Denny Hamlin got into the back of Chris Buescher and got a ton of damage, and Chris Buescher got into the back stretch roll really, really hard. Both Denny Hamlin and Chris Buescher would fall out of the race for that contact, unfortunately. Well, Chris Bu Denny Hamlin would come down pit road to try to fix the damage, and then... On the final restart, if Kyle Larson on the inside and William Byron on the outside, Kyle Larson gets a really, really good restart. William Byron tries to challenge Kyle Larson overall for the victory in the status, but it's not enough. Coming off the final corner, Kyle Larson comes off the corner and picks up his eighth win of the 2021 season and also locks his way up to run for a championship at Phoenix International Raceway. Kyle Larson by far had the best car today. He led over 100 laps in days. So There's close to 200 laps today. Had probably the best car as a whole. Dominated this race. Deserved the win as a whole. This five teams won the last two weeks. They have shown a lot of promise and have shown a lot of speed. And they absolutely deserve to win today. So huge congratulations to Kyle Larson of picking up his eighth win of the season. And he's going to be running for a championship. And he absolutely deserves to be running for a championship, in my honest opinion. So huge congratulations to Kyle Larson on picking up his eighth win of the 2021 season. So now, let's go ahead and go through the race results of today's race. So Kyle Larson picks up the win today, gets his eighth win of the season. William Byron finished second. William Byron, I think, had the only car that really could count, challenge Kyle Larson all day long. That 24 team, I think, is going to have a lot of momentum going into next year. And they're showing it again today with a very solid top five run. Ran a top five pretty much all day long. They absolutely deserved it. Great run for him. Chris Bell, top five run. Great run for Chris Bell today. Ran top ten pretty much majority of the event. Great run for Chris Bell. He finishes in third. Brad Keselowski with a very, very good fourth place finish. Considering Brad Keselowski is going to need a lot of points because I think it, uh, points are going to be super important. The fact that he finished fourth in today's race is really, really good. He finishes a fourth great run for Brad Keselowski. Kevin Harvick with the top five. After getting eliminated last week, his car looked absolutely horrible in the beginning. But they improved the car early in the race and they were able to get up to the top five and finish top five. Great run for Kevin Harvick. Ryan Blaney finished the sixth. Good comeback for Ryan Blaney. Saw a top 10 run. Going to help him in the points for sure going into next week at Kansas. Chase Elliott finishes in seventh. Great run for Chase Elliott considering he had multiple times where he was having tire issues throughout the race. Seventh place finish. Great run for Chase Elliott. Kyle Busch finishes eighth. Top 10 run. Great run for Kyle Busch today. He will help him in the points going into the next rounds. Eighth place run. Good run for Kyle Busch. Tyler Reddick finishes ninth. Great run for Tyler Reddick. Ran top 10 or top 5 pretty much all day long. Deserves a top 10. He finishes the ninth. He's had a lot of momentum going into next year. He's been probably the best driver besides William Byron that's not in the playoffs right now. They're eliminated from the playoffs. I think he's been the best driver this best one of the best drivers not competing right now for the championship. And I think he's been really good. Ninth place run, great run for him. Daniel Suarez finishes 10th. Very solid top 10 run for Daniel Suarez today. Daniel Suarez ran a lot of his race in the top five and a top 10, and that track house team has been showing a lot of promise and a lot of speed at points the last couple of weeks. This team has been making a comeback. They're starting to try to make some strides toward the end of the year. Solid top 10 run from him. He finishes in 10th. Denny Hamlin, even after the big damage, finishes 11th. Nice job on a recovery for Denny Hamlin. Glenn place run. Best you can do is 11th. Pretty good for Denny Hamlin after the damage. Eric Jones finishes 12th. Very solid run for Eric Jones. Great run for him today as a whole. Fin ran a top 15 a majority day. Ran as well in the top 10 at certain points of today's race. 12th place run for Eric Jones. Pretty good. Matt Benedetto finishes 13. Matty D had a good car early in the race. He went multiple laps down. I think one or two laps down early in the race. But for him to come back and finish in the top 15 in 13th place. Good run for Matty D. He finishes in 13th. Austin Hill finishes in 14th. Chase Briscoe, even after his issues today, he finishes top 15. I think Chase Briscoe as a season has gone and progressed. I do think that he's improved as a whole as a driver. So a top 15 run is really, really good. He finishes in 15th. Kerr Bush finishes in 16th. Michael McDowell with a solid top 21. He finishes in 17th. Eric Onroll finishes in 18th. Cole Custer finishes 19th. Corey LaJoy, nice bounce back after getting damaged in one of the early wrecks. He finishes in 20th. Chris Buescher finishes 21st, 22nd for BJ McLeod. It's a shame because Chris Buescher had a good run today. Good run. We had a good run and unfortunately got wrecked out, but 21st place finish. 23rd for Davis Saar. Davis Saar got a top 25 in that equipment. Really good run for them today. 23rd place finish. That's got to be positive for the NBM Motorsports camp and good for the owner's point position as a whole. Gary Smith, he finishes in 24th, saw a top 25 for them. Mark Trishner, after getting involved in the wreck, he finishes in 25th. Josh Blakey finishes 26th. 
27 for Timmy Hill, 28 for Ross Chastain after getting involved in the big one early. And the Friend finishes 29, 30 for Joey Logano after his engine let go. 31st for Quinn Howe, 32nd for Bubba Wallace after causing a big one. 33rd for Alex Bowman, 34 for Ricky Senhouse Jr., 35th for Ryan Newman, 36 for Ryan Priest, 37 for Justin Hilly, 38th for Cody Ware, and finishing last in 39th place is Joey Gates. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the point standings after today and take a look at the championship standings. All right, so now let's take a look at the point standings going into the next race. So Kyle Larson, after his win, he's locked into the next round. Ryan Blaney has a 17-point cushion after today's race. Denny Hamlin sits 9 points ahead, and Kyle Busch sits 8 points ahead. Chase Elliott currently sits 5th below the cutoff line by 8 points. Brad Zossi, 6 in points, 15 points back. Mark Jr. 7, 22 points back. And Joey Logano is 43 points back. Looking at this, I think that Chase Elliott and Brad Kozlowski mathematically can make it on points. I think Mark Trey Jr. is going to have to really have a really strong run at Kansas, which he's historically really good at the next two tracks coming up. I'm not too worried about Mark Trey Jr. or Chase Elliott. Joey Logano, though, is going to have to win for sure in one of these next two races. It's going to be very tough for Joey Logano to make it on points unless these guys above the cutoff line besides Kyle Larson are able to do that. So now let's go ahead and talk about the race as a whole. I'm going to say about today's race, I thought today's race was overall decent for Texas standards. I don't think Texas racing is really that good. You kind of have to have low expectations going into it. And for the first time in a few years, the racing was not very unbearable to watch. I thought the race was okay. It wasn't that amazing, but the cautions definitely helped to where the restarts are really, really good. But at the same time, Texas Motor Speedway is Texas Motor Speedway. It doesn't matter what package or what resin compound you use, what air traction compound you use. It really doesn't matter. The racing still is going to be iffy at Texas Motor Speedway. And you're going to have single. It was a lot of times slot car racing. It's very, very tough to pass at points. But there was also exciting moments of the race and a lot of chaos. It really kept you intrigued throughout the day. So I'm going to give today's race at Texas Motor Speedway as a whole. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I thought the race, like I said, was okay. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't horrible. And we saw a guy that absolutely deserves a win get the victory. So, anyway, that is for today's race view from Texas Motor Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on so you're notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support our page. Well, let's go to below for that and comment all your thoughts on today's race at Texas Motor Speedway. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Kyle Larson on picking up his eighth win of the season and locking up a spot into the championship four at Phoenix. Next weekend, we're going to Kansas Speedway for the final mile and a half of the 2021 season and also the final race with the 550 package at least in 2021. I'll see you guys there. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.